Hello and welcome to another lesson in our VBA programming assistance. Now things are getting much more interesting. Okay, so in this lesson, we are going to combine all the basic stuff we've learned from lesson one to lesson four and create a very nice and amazing cell-based user form for collecting of our data and storing inside a simple database. All is going to be created in Excel VBA macros. It's going to be fun and very simple and straightforward. Okay. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please kindly do that. Subscribe and press the bell icon so that you can receive notifications anytime we upload new lessons. And also keep practicing because in our upcoming lessons, we'll be giving assignments and make sure you do the assignments. And because that is what we believe in practice means man perfect you practice and you become perfect in all we are doing okay so basically that is that now let's delve into today's lessons thank you hello and welcome to another lesson in our vba training and in this course we're going to combine all the basic tips and tricks we've already learned in our previous lessons to design a very simple data collection form so let's dive right into that i've already created one so i'm just going to show you the demo or how it works before we go ahead and see how we can create exactly the same thing so let's just launch it so this is the form is this is a form that is that is that is taking just three data that is the client name date and amount okay so you can see some blurred text inside the form it is just a formula that is used to do that and we shall be doing all these things from clean slate so that you see every line of code everything that is hidden behind this all the back end the source code and everything you need to see it's how each and everything is done step by step okay we're not going to rush we're just going to relax and make sure that we got a concept perfect but once we begin typing it's so what, what what we do here is to take the client's name date amount and then we submit the moment we submit then this particular line gives us the, 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 the date and time of submission of that particular data so once the data is submitted it is stored here okay on a sheet called data so okay let's just check that and see. so let's enter client's name let's see uh kofia right. okay now the date is going to be something like uh, 10 10 2020 perfect and then the transaction amount let's say 5000 so when we have done we just click on now the moment we click on submit the system is going to record the time the current time and date from the system okay so let's just see for now we have the time to be 10 4 10 4 okay now once we submit it we should see something like uh, 10 51 as we can see so let's just do that so you can see the date sorry the time has quickly changed to what 10 that is exactly time or the exact time the data is what submit so let's just go ahead and check so you can see coffee out the date and then the transaction will be captured okay so that is how so we're going to just design it this is just a simple cell-based type user form okay like i said we have a lot to do we have a lot to cover so let's dive right into it and see how it's going to be let me just show you the, the source code let me see this is just the source code that is taking care of all that we're going to write all this by ourselves and then after that we're going to take a very simple assignment which i believe each and everyone will be able to do it without any stress okay so like that let's just dive right into it so you can just see close it once again i'm advising you please practice 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 that is the only way we can make it you learn it once and you leave it you don't practice you come and you forget you don't even know where to start from frustration setting we don't want it that way okay so practice so let's go ahead and start our work so we open our vba training folder we're going to create another workbook here so you go to new right click and go to new Choose Microsoft Excel to so give it a name, okay? Let's say projects. 
project one okay now we just double press the enter key on the keyboard to open once we open we need to save it as a macro enable web. to do that go to file come to save as then we choose the VBA training folder then we choose the save as type to what macro enable we can maintain the name and then we click on save so we can close this now and go back to our folder now in here we have two files one for uh, project one project one one is dot xlsm i've already explained that that is a macro enable and the other one is xlx sx which is not coming with which is not a macro enable workbook okay so we delete that one so that we go with the one with the macros else if we use that the one i just deleted our macros will not run and for that matter our data will not be collected perfect that so let, now let's just open the macro enable workbook and then minimize it and start with okay so the first thing we're going to do is we shall be hiding some rows and columns okay yes as you saw the interface so we're going to do it step by step so let's just first go ahead and hide our first row that is row one okay let's hide it we don't need it for now now once we are done with that let's select row four press and hold control on the keyboard and select row seven and select row ten and finally row two row 12 now we're going to just shrink them a bit close them a bit so we just do this okay perfect so we have that now the next thing we're going to do is we need to close the column b as well so we close it like this good now we need to expand the column c where we have where we shall be having our fields and then the labels perfect and this is okay now the first thing we're going to do is let's just type in here let's say um, uh, input form okay that is the the type of form we are designing the name of the form so say input form okay so to make it a bit fancy you're just going to write something like the version of it so it's a v version that is 1.0 okay it's just fun that's that is just the national so we can just uh, reduce the font size so that it doesn't capture my attention so let's bold it and make them grow up a bit all right okay sorry we need to decrease this Perfect. This is okay. We can make this grow up once again. This is okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is this. We're going to have our as an event, our labels here. Our labels here. So we have the first label, which is the client name. So you see, sorry, client name. Then the second one we have transaction dates okay and the third one we have amounts or uh, transaction amounts perfect now we need to make them grow up a bit <laughs> sorry for you said that word please so we did, we increase the fonts and then uh, size and then try to pull it as well you can left classify it so we will expand the column d or you can have our fields we're going to be entering our data okay so this is going to be for the name transaction date transaction amount okay perfect and then the, the, the this row is going to capture the last execution information what we saw in the demo video or in the demo session okay now so to collect now we need some uh, formula here okay we're gonna have some formula here that will that will help us have the text that thin text we have here which is used to guide the user on what to do on the form okay so to do that first of all let's have the data that we need to be displayed in here when there is when there is no data or maybe if there is nothing in the cell what we would want to display here so that when the user sees that it guides the user on what to do okay so to do that let's come to column n here come to this column and then uh, so let's type something like uh, inputs 
client name okay sorry so and then we come here we say input transaction date i'll explain much i'll explain more about that so that transaction dates okay and the next one is input transaction amounts perfect so we have this that so now what we are going to do is this whenever there is no data here or there is nothing in this cells we would want this particular text to appear here but once we begin typing just as you saw okay so to do that we need a formula here okay so let's have the formula this is going to be some very simple and short if statement type of formula okay so we say if you know formulas we start with the equal sign then we have the if statement then into bracket if then the logical text what is the logical text if this particular cell or maybe range is empty so it's equal to an empty string the two inverted commas without anything in between them means an empty string right if that's this particular one that is a, the, the range d9 is equal to empty we want something to happen it means we want to return some text what text do we want to return if it is equal to empty then don't forget comma we would want to return something here what do we want to return this particular text okay that is the m9 else then comma we would want it to remain empty then you add another empty string then you close the bracket and you press enter so you can see that we already have that here so we just uh, copy this ctrl c to copy it paste it here so when we paste it here based on what we have here is what is going to be displayed in here so ctrl v so we have transaction date here and then here to transaction amount okay so now this trick please we shouldn't just limit our mind on this okay we, we can expand our right we will try whenever we want to create an application we can apply all these steps in our upcoming applications that we shall be creating on our or by ourselves okay that is what we, should, we will be doing it doesn't mean this is where we can just use this no we can use it anywhere it's a trick okay so let's master it and then apply it in our in our uh, whenever we, we create or develop our applications just to make them look stunning and nice so that is that now what we need to do is just select this and then we just left justify so it goes in here select this as well left justify it select this as well let's justify now we need them inside here okay so to do that you just double click here so we give enough space just move the cursor to them and then press the space bar to give more space okay give more space now let's click outside you so that it moves it but it's still not in the middle so we need more space so you double click again and move the cursor to the edge here. give additional space a bit so you can see it's like still not in the middle double click again move it to the edge press again and fine it's in the middle now so we come to this one as well you move the cursor to the edge okay, move it move it move it move it move it yeah perfect it's still not in the middle so you move it again give space so you move it it's like it's also okay or we just move it a bit once again Okay. okay it's okay so now we left the last one transaction amounts so let's move it so press the, the right arrow to move the case and be very careful with what we're doing here so that we don't mess things up perfect let's move it small okay? perfect so this is okay so now we would want to make it blur okay we don't want it to appear like this okay although it doesn't change anything when we begin typing it disappears once we are out or there is no content it comes back because that is what the formula says if the range is empty we would want to return this text here from this particular range okay and this one as well so that is that so to make it a bit so we need to make it blur so we select this and then just go to the font then we choose this black color here okay this one as well choose the same thing this one as well choose the same thing now once we are done with that we can just close this a bit like this
perfect don't over close it because you'll be using it i'll be giving you an assignment so be mindful with, with, with how you handle you see that our labels move this way we don't want it like that so we need to uh, give it uh, some spaces back 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 okay it moves a bit so double click inside here again and you give space then you come back a bit and it moves i'm talking of this okay sorry double click inside double click inside then you move a bit again you move using the arrow and after that the backspace key then it, it moves okay now we have it in the center so this one to as well use the, uh, the right arrow to move it keep moving it then after that it begin coming back so that we move this bit so it has moved still not well centered so we want it to be in the center now we gave it space back again perfect so, so okay now the last one let's move using the right arrow new space sorry then we come back again okay let's sorry let's use the right arrow to move it and use a space a backspace to use the space then we bring it use the right arrow once again to move it don't move it using the space bar because if you do it wouldn't respond it wouldn't work the way we want it so now you can use the backspace to move it a bit it should be okay. so we have that as well here also centered so this is kind of good it's okay so now let's let's make let's make our form take a shape so let's select this up to column g here like this let's just go to um let's give it a thick border around that okay so select this as well this let's give it another thick border there so we are good to go with that now the next line of action is this uh, would want to hide all these ranges okay so to do that we would want to hide the, 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 the various uh, the grid lines the cells and all that although they are not hidden just hiding the grid lines but the cells remain there so we go to view tab and then we click this and have this so this is okay so now this test how it's going to be so to make it hidden let's just select this we can hide that particular side press ctrl shift and you move this and then the right arrow then you can just right click and hide it it will work perfectly but for now since i'll be giving an assignment to do you will need them back okay so i don't want you to hide it for now please i don't want you to hide it for now now what i want you to do is let's just quickly go back home let's change let's go to the home tab and change the background color to white and we change the font to white as well so perfect it's hidden so if you want your text back so you can see it perfectly you know where to go so that is that our form is now beginning to take a shape okay so that is how we want it so the next thing we need right now is we're going to name this ring but to do that we need to have our um, various fields take a shape so we select this control press control on the keyboard select this and select that now right click on any of them and go to format cells now on this we go to uh, borders we want to give it some borders around them okay let's see, let's see, so that we check on what to do to do that now uh, let's use this thick border at the top okay and then at the edge here then we use this dotted ones here and bottom think this will look good okay so let's continue now what we need to do is this now we need to make this particular ring this uh, static so that even if we go ahead and add another insert another rule it wouldn't change anything here let me just undo my action okay let's let's do that before i, I explain what i'm talking about let's select this if you go to name ring let's give it like a c name like c name meaning client's name okay c name meaning client's name okay then you, after typing that you press enter anytime you select it you should see that if you did you fail to press the enter it wouldn't work so you go to the second one let's give it t date meaning transaction date t date then after that you press enter when you select it again you should see the name there 
then the last one let's give it t amount in a transaction amount t amount then you press enter so we have our three ranges now now why do we do this or why is it necessary for us to do this it's very simple okay if as we've just done this even if we should go ahead and set another rule this range remains the same wherever we go it remains the name remains the same but what am i even talking about let me just undo all this and show you previously what, what what's going to happen without renaming the the, the, the ranges okay, let me just check it's not named it's not named it's not named good now let's check something you can see that for now the name is what the name of this range is what d9 okay is d9 now if you want to leave it like this we can refer to d9 in our what in our codes this one as well d11 this one as well d13 we can refer to that as you know how you make reference to all these ranges in our codes we did it before okay so now let's just go ahead and insert another row here let's check something now you can see that the range which is what which was d9 has now become d10 the d11 became d12 d13 became d14 right so with this if you should go ahead if you write your code and you refer to this as previously d9 and then d11 uh, sorry d10 and then d uh, what was the name d12 or whatever or 13 it, as you as you saw it if you go ahead and refer to that in your codes now that you've inserted another row, it will change everything it means you have to go to your source code and edit all this because you've inserted another row but if you just name it it's like declaring a variable and assigning a value to it and so you change the value the value remains the same okay so now if we name it i've selected the d9 again i've just and, and do my action and i'm back to form so let me just name it again like c amount c amount then press enter and then come here t date t date press enter and then here t what uh, amount okay hey it's like the first one i've named it t amount rather if i'm right okay t amount this should be t oh sorry this should be t name perfect t name meaning transaction name oh sorry this should be client name rather please forgive me sorry this should be c. sorry oh. this should be client so c name meaning client name wow Okay, let me just undo all this. Okay, so that we, we get it what we want it. Good. So this should be C name. Okay, C name. Please forgive me for this. Okay, it's, it's just what C name, meaning client's name. This T date, T date, meaning transaction name. Press enter always after that. And the last one, T amount. Perfect. Press enter key as well. So we have all this T amount, transaction date, and then client name. Good. Now that we've named our ranges now, let's go ahead and add and insert another rule. Let's even insert another one here. So let's oh sorry, let me just I don't want I don't want that one. So this. Perfect. No, I don't want those small, small rules. I want the, the, the big ones. Okay. Let's insert another one here. Good. Now you can see I've inserted like even two rules. Okay. But still, if I click inside this, this ring, it remains what? Client name. I click inside here, it remains what? Transaction date. Click inside, it remains what? Transaction amount. So that is how useful it is. So it's like declaring a variable and assigning a value to it until you decide to change the value the value remains the same until we decide to change the, the name range it remains like that so you don't have to go to your source code and do any changes over there again so that is how it is very useful when you do this okay i'll be giving you assignments on how to add another and uh, maybe a field and label by yourself maybe 
a transaction uh, maybe the payers name then the payers address okay you'll be doing that by yourself okay but in this video we're just going to design the, the, the user form just the user form and then the the data sheet when we are done the next video go ahead and write the codes to collect the data perfect so that is that so now let me just undo all this okay so now we still have our information intact and everything perfect so let's go ahead and save our web now the last thing we need here is just the the button the submit button so to that we go just let's go to insert and we go to shape mm, take the shape and then just bring it somewhere down here okay and then we want it to be transparent then the color should be something like this okay. so right click and edit test so you see submit data give it that name let us go and let's center it okay let's bring it to the middle perfect and just bold it change the existing uh, font times new roman I think uh, that's kind of good. It's okay. So we can just adjust it way we want. Good. With the last execution date and blah 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 blah, we're going to refer to that in our course. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that. So this is just the form that we saw. So for now, and so we write our macro spell. We'll be assigning the button to that. You can't do anything here. So we are done with the design of the form. So you follow the steps uh, I've just um, demonstrated in the video. You make sure you do exactly the same thing without. So just let's rename this sheet to be what form okay. Perfect. So let's add another sheet here. Let's name it data. That is where our data is going to be stored. So let's just name here to be the client name or let's say name. Say date. You can name it whatever. And then amount. Perfect. I mean, the name we want to make it bigger. It as well a bit bigger. The amount is okay. So you can just select this. We center it. We bold it. Change the font if you like. The times new room. Okay, you can give it a background color as so maybe this and then the font color to be white and then perfectly. So now when we collect our data from here, whatever, 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 and then we click on submit, it should go there. Perfect. So we're going to write our code line by line, step by step, and you'll be able to understand everything. For now, go ahead and design the form interface as well as the data sheet and then perfectly you make sure you save your work and then for now we can just leave it for now and then in our next video we go ahead and write the macros to be able to collect the data from this form and save it on the sheet till our next lesson say so thank you very much for watching and bye for now